while I've been working on the tiny amplifier, I stumbled upon a little problem that uh, kind of brought me to a little sidestep. So as you see, we have uh, two output transformers as we usually have on tube amp. And I have to say, I never really knew what exact transformers these were for, which tubes they were used or what specific uh, data they have. I never knew that. In my first attempt when I built this amp like uh, I think it was around 16, 20 years ago, around that area. Um, I just guesstimated. And it worked. It worked pretty fine for, well, at least 15 years. Uh, but now for this, uh, this project, I want to calculate the amp completely from the ground up. So this turned uh, into a little quite complicated or quite elaborate side project where I had to find out more about these output transformers. So I thought about some ways to measure these and one of that includes one of these nice little fellows. This is a TDA 2030. It's just a basic little audio amplifier which is needed to amplify the signal from my signal generator. So, yeah, I think I will make a extra episode on how to measure these uh, output transformers or basically how to make measurements on all kind of transformers for that matter. In this episode, however, we want to build this little TDA2030 into a yeah, a kind of measurement amplifier. Well, basically just an audio amplifier as the application note shows. And yeah, let's see how that turns out. So according to the standard diagram, this is all that we need for this TDA2030 to be used as a standard amplifier with a single supply voltage. It's not much, it's just a few capacitors, a few resistors, two diodes and of course the IC itself. So yeah, let's see how it turns out and if we can make a useful circuit on just a piece of bread pot.
here we are with the finished product. It's just, as you see, a quick and dirty kind of deal. Uh, I also added a few more things like the trim potentiometer here to have a basic uh, volume control. Um, I added the sternal blocks for the power input, line signal input, or in this case the signal generator, and load output, where we will connect our output transformer to. Yeah, let's see if this works. So I try to have all this in frame as well as a shot of the tiny Tektronix 222 oscilloscope that I'm using to measure this right now, including the DIY probe that we made recently. And yeah, we have connected our signal generator using these ultra crappy leads, but they will work for what we are doing. We do are not doing any ultra precision right now. We have connected uh, the scope once at the input. This is channel one, which is displayed right now. The signal generator is already up and running and we are outputting roughly one volt peak to peak. So let's get that a bit bigger. Oh, it's glitching a bit. Why is it glitching? Do we have some problem with the scope? Okay. Then we stay on that magnification. It will work as well. So. As I said, it is outputting roughly one volt peak to peak, and we have around one kilohertz right now. So we have connected our power here, which I will connect to the PSU right now. We are powering in 18 and a half volts, and the circuit is drawing just 142 milliamperes. So that is good enough, I would say. So right now we can see that our channel 2 is a bit misaligned. So let's center that. And also keep in mind that the scope probe is in times 10 mode. So we have a uh, not a scaling of 0.5 volts, but instead it is 5 volts per division. So let's magnify that a bit. And we can see at first that we have a slight phase shift. Let's zoom in a bit here. That's just almost not notable. Um, well, <laughs> if you look at the circuit, it is pretty obvious where that is coming from. Um, also, we can see that we have basically no distortion in the signal powering into this power resistor here, which is quite nice. So let's enhance the image a bit more to get it a bit bigger. And we can see that we have an output of, what is that, one, two, three, that's roughly three and a half to four divisions. So we are outputting around four volts here with an input voltage of around one volts. So doesn't sound much, but we are, we are basically at the minimum configuration of the potentiometer, which is totally fine. We do not need much voltage out of this circuit for what we want to do. So, yeah, I would say this little example works pretty well. I liked uh, building this little circuit. It was a pretty neat layout. I also like using these old components of mine that are just otherwise basically rotting away in storage. So, yeah, I think that is quite nice. Let's just, for fun, turn up the volume and see if we can hear the one kilohertz emitting from the power potentiometer. I would not be 
too irritated if we are hearing it. So I am disconnecting these to better reach it. I should use a correct flathead screwdriver for that. Which I can't find right now. There it is. So we have that connected. Let's hook that back up. Disable channel one. So and let's see, we do not change the input voltage at all. We just increase the volume. So let's see what we can achieve here. And we are clipping, which is clipping from the power supply I noticed, as I have that limited to 500 milliampere. Just before clipping, just before limiting, we have reached, this is five, uh, five volts per division, so we have reached 10 volts into this power resistor here. Let's increase the current limit for the PSU. So here we are at, what is that? It is around five divisions, so 15 volts peak peak. And I can indeed hear a just a slight hum out of this power resistor. Nice. Let's turn that down. As this is a very, very small heatsink for this kind of transistor or integrated amplifier, which is already getting quite toasty. We do not want to overheat that. Yeah, so far I would say this has worked perfectly as I intended and we can definitely use that circuit for what I had in mind. So if you're curious what that is, Please turn in the next time back here at Tinkertube's lab.